the one story I always tell because I think that every person who gets their first job in radio, there's a certain amount of terror and a certain amount of fear and you don't know if you can do this job. But the most important thing is, is holding on to and hanging on to your job. And I was very young, you know, I was still a teenager when I started um, at, at uh, CKY. And I don't know whether I was just too young or too immature, but I didn't quite grasp how important it was to behave and hold on to the job. And I worked at a station that had no key to the door. You, everybody got in because there was always somebody in there and they buzzed you in. And so I was doing the all night show and there would be nobody to buzz me in. So I not going to be able to leave the, the station. And I was working midnight to six and right below the, the station was Chan's Cafe. And I craved a hamburger and a milkshake so much. So I phoned down to Chan's Cafe and I said, could you have it ready? Uh, how much is it? I'll have the money. And all I had to do was go run down the stairs, turn the corner, go into Chan's Cafe, pick up the food and run back up the stairs. But I knew that I had to prop open that door because if the door was closed, I wouldn't get back in. And so I went to the door doing some reconnaissance and I pushed the door open to see what I could prop it up. And as it turned out, they just put a fresh linoleum base in there. And as I opened the door, the door wedged tight shut, tight open. And I thought, simple, I don't even have to prop this open. So off I went, up, down, get the stuff. And when I came back upstairs, that damn door was closed. <laughs> I don't know whether the linoleum melted or what, but the door was closed. And and I'm so I'm I'm 18 and a half or 19 or whatever. And there's a record playing that I know is three minutes and 45 seconds, which is a long time, but for a record in those days. And I can't get in the door. There's no way I can get in the door. And so I thought, I have some choices I can make. One, just go to the parking lot, get in my car, and leave town. And, and I contemplated that because I thought, that's probably all I can really do. And just say, if anybody says, did you do that? No, it wasn't me. It was somebody else. But I, I thought, I, well, I'll take a chance. I, I knew there was a fire escape around the back. And the newsmen would go down, because it would go down right to a hotel, and they'd go down there for beers in between um, newscasts. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll just scramble up that fire escape and see if I can get in that way. And of course, it has one of those doors that you know, goes from the inside. There's no, there's no handle on the outside. So I got up there and I could see there was no handle on the door. But it had snowed up on that fire escape thing and the snow had just held that door open a crack. Just held the door open a crack. And I was able to open the door, get in. Now I had to go quite a ways from the newsroom all the way down to the control room. And I'd run up the fire escape, got in, ran down the hallway, ran into the control room and sat down. And I actually made it back before the 3.45, before three minutes and 45 seconds had gone. And so I I succeeded. And I learned another lesson that day, not just don't leave the ship, but the other lesson I learned is don't ever try and go in the air after you've been running 150 yards, because I didn't know that. And I. I, I couldn't talk and I was, it, was, it was quite embarrassing.